So your childhood home, mm-hmm. right? The place you grew up in that you lived in until you were 11. Right. You moved out when you were 11. Mm-hmm. Okay. 11? O- yeah, you moved out when you were 11. Oh, okay, not not to live on your own, but you moved out to live with your parents somewhere else. Well, okay, You. Mo- I'll be honest. You moved out because your father committed suicide. Oh, uh, okay. Okay, so you live there with your whole family. Your dad commits suicide. Your mom moves you out, and you move somewhere else in the country. Mm-hmm. Okay? You have been out of that house for over 20 years. Mm-hmm. You've been out of the house for over 20... Tw- you were out of the house longer than you were in the house. Okay. Okay? New people moved in. Mm-hmm. They bought the house right after you left. They took down some walls. They repainted. The whole house is different. They took down the shrubs. The house is a metaphor, they- isn't it? No, no, no. This really oh, okay. happened. It's, okay. <laughs> You find out this morning that in the fires in California, that house burned down. Mm -hmm. How much do you care about it? Extremely. What? Yeah. Why would you care about a house you haven't lived in in 20 years? Because you always have a place in your heart for that first house. You always do. But it's just a house. It's, It's a thing. Like... Your memories are your memories. What's it got to do with the stupid house? No, every time I go back home to Michigan, I drive past my house. Why? Other people live there. I want to go in there. But it's not your house. It's somebody else's it's, house. And it doesn't look like the house. It's always going to be my house. No, it's not because they have repainted. They have redecorated, hopefully, in the past 20 years. It, looks, <laughs> doesn't, it doesn't have the same appliances. Uh, I don't think so because I actually saw pictures of it. Uh, not too long ago because they put it up for sale. Pretty much the same house. Uh, yeah, I have I have a, a, it's like my kids. My kids love the first house they were in. They want to buy that house. They want to live in that house. I, it, with guys, it's different than with girls. No, but that's different because their first house was better than the house they're in now. And also they're still young. <laughs> they're, they're still young. I mean, I could, you know, I'm talking about like a house that they haven't lived in, that they're off on their own. They have their own lives. You know, they're mm. in their 20s or 30s. I don't get the attachment to like some house. Some, And also, especially if your dad committed suicide there, aren't you like, uh, I want to be as far away from that place as possible. No, I think that makes you want to live there more. I don't know. But you but you didn't live there. And the house is long gone and now it's burned down. Mhm. No, oh, I'd be sad. I'd be very sad. Really? Yeah. You wouldn't care? No, I don't not at all. I don't get it at all. I mean, people are, are always like I've got friends that still live in the hometown where I grew up. And I grew up in two places because I lived in Coney Island, Brooklyn, then we lived in Long Island for a little while and we kind of moved around a little, but I grew up in two different houses. And I still have friends who are in that neighborhood who like to tell me about what's going on in the neighborhood of my house. Like, why would I care? I, I don't live there anymore. I, it's, I, it's lo- I have the memories in my brain. I could care less what the new house looks like or what the street looks like or anything going on there. I don't get it. Okay, let's, let's put it in terms you can understand. Your first very, very expensive, nice pair of shoes. Remember those? Yes. If those burned up, would you be sad? No, because they're just shoes. Really? I have other shoes. Wouldn't I bother on. you at all. No, I mean I don't wear those shoes anymore. They don't fit me anymore. It's you know I've I've replaced them with other shoes that I love more that have more meaning for me. Do you have anything in your life that's a possession other than your dog that you care deeply for? Things? Why would I care about things? I care your about your bike. People. You love your bike. Well, I love my bike because it was my only friend when I lived on Long Island uh-huh. and because I found it hard to find a bike that fits. You know, I'm five, I'm five, two and a half. It's hard to find a bike that I fit on that is a good bike. So I just like it because it's a good bike. I'd be bummed if someone stole it. That's just weird to me. I think I think you are stranger than Joe for missing his house. He said that I'm the exception rather than the rule. And I yes. said, no, people don't aren't attached to some house that they haven't seen in 20 years. You are the 1%. Really? Yes. Okay, so explain to me, what's the attachment to a house that you lived in? You've been out of that house longer than you've been in the house. And it wasn't even your house. It was your parents' house. What's the attachment? I don't know. It, it's just, 
I would move back to Michigan and buy that house and live in that house. Ew, why? You've you've grown and 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 matured so much further beyond that. Why would you take a big step back like that? There's a lot of memories there. I don't know. I think there's there's gaps in my memory and if I'm in that house it could fill those gaps. I don't know. It's See, I think that's dangerous. I think the memories are in your brain. And once you go back and actually see the place, you, you're you going to find that the memories aren't so beautiful and they're not so loving and they're not they're not what you think they are. Mm. You know, that's that's the thing about memory. And we find this over and over about memory is that the memory you actually have of something tends not to be accurate. Like, I feel bad for these kids that their parents videotape everything they do from the second they can walk. Because then they have a memory of something, then they see the video, and the video is not at all what the memory was. I think you could be the only person like this in America. No. I think so. Maybe the world. I, I don't understand sentimentality. I just don't. I'm sorry. It's one of my flaws. I think you have no feelings. I have lots of feelings. I think They're you just... have no feelings. <laughs> I have plenty I, I have plenty of feelings about things that are tangible in my life right now. I have feelings about people. I have feelings about animals. Life moves forward. doesn't move backwards. I think it's dangerous to go back. The house you grew up in on Long Island. Yeah. You wouldn't go back to that house and walk around and go in no, your No, for what? Really? A new family lives there. It's not the same house. They've painted. They've redecorated, I hope. You know, I haven't lived there since I was uh, 15. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I hope they have all new things inside. It's It's their house. It's not my memories are long gone from there. My memories are in my brain. No, I think you really need to see somebody. I mean, to lay down on a couch and talk to somebody at least once a week uh, for the rest of your life because you have no, this I think No, I think it's unhealthy to live in the past. Live in the present and think about your future. And Joe agrees with me, I guarantee it, that you are very strange. He took your side. And I, I, you know, I really thought that when I presented this whole thing to you that you were going to take my side and be like, who would care about a house? No. But I, you know what? I'm surprised to hear that you took his side. He might be right. I might be the minority. No, like my last house, I love that house. And I would go back and move into that house. Now, the apartment in Long Island, would I want to go back in? Maybe. No, you know. wouldn't. Yeah, it's the smells. It's the sights. It's Ugh, the... We hated everything about it. What are I you talking know, about? But... <laughs> but if I go back up there, I'm a. Hey, can I come in and look around? You know, no. The only thing I miss is uh, the bike trails in the back. I would, I'd like to take my bike there and go. For but a nice you don't care about the apartment. No. Why would I care? <laughs> it's just weird to me. I think it's weird that you would care about a place you lived in for two years. That you hated the neighbors. They were really loud. They stomped on the ceiling. The dogs barked constantly. They had twenty chimes outside. You hated everything about your car. You were in bed sleeping and your car got into an accident outside and the cops came to find out what you did wrong. Oh, my God. I just figured it out. What? You only remember the bad things. You don't remember <laughs> the good things. Guys only remember the good things. We don't remember the bad things. So you only remember the bad things that happened in that apartment. I didn't think of any of that when I thought back to that apartment. Okay, name one good thing that happened in the that apartment. The shower was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I, have a be- I have a better shower here in my apartment here. The the shower had a window in it. I could open the window when I was taking a shower and look out. And you don't wave have a window people. in your bathroom right now? No, I don't have it in a shower. I want it in a shower. Okay, fine. You found one good thing. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sentimental for the window in the shower. <laughs> I had a really, really good bean bag that was very comfortable. Yeah, but that's something you bought. And nothing to do with the apartment. You can go buy a bean bag again times. now. You only remember the bad times. I remember good times when we have them. <laughs> <laughs> I finally figured you out. You have no good memories. All of right, your first hang on. Home. Okay, I'll give you one. I do miss my original studio. When you were in Charlotte, North Carolina, and I was in New York, and they built me that studio, I loved going there every night and doing the show with you and having my own space, and it was at night, and I brought my dog, and there was nobody around, Mm -hmm. and we did a really great show on 180 stations, and I I do miss that studio. That was a nice little scenario we had there. But if somebody went into that studio during the day and changed one button, you would go out of your mind. No, 
no, freaking Dan Aykroyd shared my studio, and he was a big fat guy at the time, and he broke my chair. He kept every time they got me a new See? chair, he broke it. So I kept having to get a brand new. I'd go, I'd go in, and there'd be no Only chair bad there memories. because Fatso broke it. Bad memories. That's one memory, and you brought that up. I brought up the good <laughs> memories. So I just want I want to go on the record and say that I made that a positive thing. You're the one who brought up the negative thing. Fat so breaking my chair. Now I have to remember that. <laughs> now you don't want to go back there at all. Screw it. Burn it to the ground. I'm still angry at Dan Aykroyd. <laughs>